Ready? Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Across the Line. We have a great show lined up for you this month. We'll start with a look at the plans recently announced for the RDS redevelopment with Mick Dawson. We visit last year's winners Ashburn to talk about the Bank of Ireland Provincial Towns Cup. And finally, we'll take a look back over the career of flanker Shane Jennings, who announced his decision to retire at the end of the season. All this along with our usual mix of highlights, league tables and previews here on Across the Line. First up on Across the Line, we caught up with Leinster CEO Mick Dawson to get his views on the RDS redevelopment, the retention of the famous terrace and where Leinster are at present. very exciting because I suppose it's something we've been talking about for quite a while to get the process underway. Uh, Last July was great, it was the first step and uh, to get the announcement of the architect in early January was uh, very pleasing. We ourselves and the RDS both had representatives on the uh, judging panel as did the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland and um, it was very professionally done and we had about 60 applications and uh, we finally got, um, we think, a very successful candidate. The ones we chose uh, have a lot of experience in the UK and uh, in Ireland and they have done work in the All England Club and the Queen's Club in uh, London and uh, I think they're also doing work down the Curragh so uh, we're very pleased and we think they'll do a good job. We'll definitely be uh, applying for a terrace in the planning application. I think it's very important, Uh, I think it's part of the atmosphere of the ground so I think we can put uh, our supporters minds at rest that we'll definitely have a terrace in the new stadium. We moved from uh, Donnybrook, which was 6,000, to the RDS, which was 18, and uh, we found uh, a new set of fans. Uh, you know, I think uh, when we go to the Aviva, we're, we're getting north of 40,000 normally, so I would hope that we will be able to cherry-pick some of those uh, people to come and make become regular supporters in the RDS, and if the facilities uh, improve, which they will, I think we'll find a new supporter there, yeah. The RDS is a special place, it's, uh, it's a fantastic location, it has a great old world feel about it and I think even though some of the facilities are probably not up to scratch uh, today, I think people like the feel of the place and we'd hope to retain that in the new stadium. Yeah, we're obviously delighted, I mean uh, uh, the Champions Cup has been very competitive this year. I think that um, getting a home quarter uh, gives you a huge advantage of getting to the semi-final stages as has been proven in the past. So we're very excited about that, we're looking forward to the 4th of April. Uh, top 4 in the Pro 12, we'll be hoping to improve that, get into the top 2 so you guarantee yourself a home semi. Playing at home makes a huge difference. So uh, at the moment, uh, touch wood, things are going well and we're looking forward to the end of the season now. With two rounds of the Bank of Ireland Provincial Towns Cup now played, we visit last year's winners Ashburn and talk about winning the competition and the history involved. The Provincial Towns Cup has been, is, is probably, I suppose it's the oldest cup in Leinster. Um, it first played in 1889, but what it means today is the uh, the paramount of a lot of people's career who play just ordinary club rugby. Um, it's a provincial competition played outside of the metro area. It's open to some 40 clubs throughout the length and breadth of the 12 counties. Now that we're celebrating the 90th anniversary of the Cup this year, um, it's to me it's something special. Uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's looking like it's going to be a fantastic competition. There'll be passion on the field, there'll be uh, commitment that you won't see in a league match. Uh, and, you know, as I said, people are prepared to die for their clubs because this is what junior rugby is all about. This is what provincial rugby is all about. For me, it, it, it's a great competition. It has to be one of the best uh, in the country, if not uh, in the, the Six Nations. Um, certainly, it's, it's a, I don't, I've been told that it's the oldest rugby cup in, uh, in the world. I might be, might be wrong on that, but that's what I've been told. Um, but for me to play in it's a privilege, but to win it is just outstanding, it's fantastic. This year, yeah, 2014 is our 40th anniversary, so 74, 75 is our first year in existence. So, uh, although we'll, we'll take it that we won the Cup in 2014 now, and as our 40th year anniversary it was a, a, a real uh, coup. 
once it gets going, you get a huge crowd coming down, you get people talking about it in the local shops, you get the priest announcing it on the podium and on Sunday masses, and then you get the bit of uh, bunting going along the village and so on, and, that, and that's what it's all about. You know, that the lads enjoy that, and the more crowd up and the more supporters, and it's better for everybody. A lot of the people who put a lot of work in behind the scenes, a lot of lads have been around the scenes for maybe 20 years trying to progress and have made one final thing up until then, so it definitely meant something to uh, a lot of lads to get that far, you know. For one thing, that night I'd seen fellas who had never been up around the club for being 10 years, had been back up there that night, you know, and there was definitely more of a sense of a buzz. You could see young lads going around the town with a rugby ball where it might necessarily would have been the gal ball up until then, but uh, I think then we done a family fun day in September and I think there was a lot of people a lot more aware of our success and definitely uh, it helped garner a bit of momentum in that sense. Next up, Leinster legend Shane Jennings has announced he is to retire at the end of the season. We caught up with the flanker to look over his career and find out what's next for him. Jeno's decided to retire at the end of the season. From my end, it's it's been a pleasure to work with him over the last two seasons, and I don't think there's been a bigger contributor to the success of the organisation. I'm very grateful that I'm I'm going to go on at my terms. Thankfully, I haven't had an injury or my head is good. Yeah, I'm just very grateful that I've been a part of such a great club, such a great team. There was a number of issues that I felt it was the right time and the right decision and. I've been preparing for this for quite some time with the help of uh, all the people in Irupa. You know, I'm glad I've made the decision and I think it's right. You know, my body's in good, relatively good condition and um, I just consider myself very lucky that I, I had the opportunity to continue and uh, thankfully there's opportunities away from the game that I felt were too good to pass up and uh, I'm looking forward to the next kind of chapter in my life. Yeah, for the time being, I won't be a coach, but you never, ne never say never, you never know, but probably not. It was unbelievably exciting for me coming out of school and having the opportunity to be a professional rugby player and uh, Swansea St Helens ground or whatever it's called. But I was on the bench with Paul Wallace and Trevor Brennan and a couple of seasoned pros and I was probably, I don't know, maybe 19 years of age or something and nervous as hell and uh, I think I got on maybe for three minutes at the end and I thought it was the greatest day of my life. A highlight from those 204 caps? Probably the 09 Heineken Cup uh, as it was our first one and it was against Leicester and I don't think many people gave us uh, a chance and and the the kind of uh, the road we took to get to the final beating some very very good teams and some big occasions. Um, I consider myself very lucky that I have been capped for my country and uh, the highlight of that was certainly the first cap in Argentina and then the World Cup down in New Zealand was a real highlight in terms of the way the squad came together probably like from my uh, from my time with Ireland, it probably hadn't been the same like that in, in, in times before. And everybody gelled, everybody had a common goal, and it was really, really enjoyable. It is Shane Jennings just looking to see as he turned the faces. Everybody, including me, wants to have a nice end to the season, so it would just be fantastic if we could do that. But uh, there's a fair bit of work to go before that, and um, yeah, fingers crossed we can go, we can keep going in the right direction. I'm looking forward to having free weekends, I'm looking forward to spending some time with my wife over the summer, we're probably going to do a bit of travelling and just experience new things, you know, uh, sitting in the sand and maybe having a beer, watching the lads and, uh, you know, being part of those supporters now because as soon as that, as soon as the end of the season comes, I'm now a supporter, so uh, looking forward to a new challenge and seeing if I'm any good at it. For more great Leinster TV content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. This month, Jimmy Goppert made his 50th Leinster appearance. Fergus McFadden was named Bank of Ireland Player of the Month for January. Leinster Academy scrum half Nick McCarthy captained the Irish under-20s to two wins from two games in the Six Nations. And ticket sales for Leinster vs Bath broke the 30,000 mark. 19 of the senior squad away in Six Nations camp, there were still two matches in the Guinness Pro 12 to contend with. First up was a home game against Dragons and a disappointing performance along with Tom Pridey's boot resulted in the end of Leinster's proud run of 27 successive wins at the RDS. 
Next up was a second home game, this time against Zebre. Despite a spirited performance in the first half by the Italians, Leinster comfortably won out with a bonus point try from Sean Cronin. After that bonus point victory over Zebre, Leinster slide up the Pro 12 table, leaving them in fourth place on 47 points, behind Ulster and Munster on 48, and league leaders Glasgow on 52. It's Pro 12 action all the way until the end of March when the Champions Cup will return. Leinster travelled to the Liberty Stadium to face Ospreys this Friday with a kick-off time of 7.35. Then it's away to Scarlets on Saturday the 7th, kicking off at 5.15. The home match against Glasgow follows on the 27th, again kicking off at 7.35. Then it's back in the Aviva Stadium on April 4th. And don't forget, all tickets are available on leinsterrugby.ie. That's all we have time for this month, folks. For more in-depth features, news and tickets, be sure to check out leinsterrugby.ie. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you next month. <laughs>